Okay. Uh, hi, everybody, and uh, welcome to the uh, Get Your Ass Over to the to TLS uh, workshop. Uh, the point of this workshop is pretty much uh, if you have any kind of problems to get TLS deployed in your infrastructure, uh, I'm going to try and help you out the best I can. Uh, first, I'm going to go, go through the dif different kind of methods to get uh, practically Let's Encrypt certificates. Um, uh, acquiring the certificates and uh, give some like a configuration tips and uh, go through some uh, kind of uh, common pitfalls and things to um, things to take into account when using like a certain uh, ways of uh, automating this stuff. So first, the uh, uh, domain validation methods uh, provided by Acme. You most likely are somewhat uh, yeah, you most likely know 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 about these already. So uh, I'll just uh, go through them pretty quickly. So first one is uh, HTTP uh, validation, which pretty much practically means you you just de deploy a TXT file uh, in your web root that the CA will well the CA CA will first uh, resolve your your uh, uh, a, 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 a record or a record and uh, to, uh, connect to that IP address and uh, with the virtual host um, that you are uh, requesting the certificate for and uh, tries to find the uh, TXT file containing the validation token uh, to be sure that you are actually controlling the uh, domain in question. Uh, the next one is TLS SNI, which is pa practically uh, deploying a self-signed certificate with a validation token uh, in an invalid, uh, like a virtual host. Uh, the process goes the same way. The CA will uh, will first resolve your your uh, IP address and connect to it, and uh, uh, read the certificate and uh, try to find the validation token uh, from it. So, hence validating your ownership of the domain. Uh, the last one that Let's Encrypt uh, supports or uh, via ACME is uh, DNS validation, which is pretty much just like uh, deploying the TXT record to your uh, uh, to your DNS zone uh, with uh, like a magic sub uh, magic subdomain underscore ACME slash uh, ACME dash uh, challenge dot your actual domain dot TLD, your TLD. So, first about HTTP validation. Uh, I went through these things already. So, these are the like the main uh, uh, things that you you should use the HTTP validation uh, usually. Uh, the clients, uh, let's encrypt clients, uh, usually help you to make the decision what you are actually what do you need to get the thing done in a way. Uh, but if you're doing uh, automation in like uh, some kind of uh, deployments uh, in uh, uh, environments that require like a uh, Ansible scripts, whatever, like uh, throwing stuff around uh, um, uh, while creating the environment, so uh, this is pretty robust because it, because it's super simple. Uh, the Acme. Uh, protocol itself, it speaks JSON over uh, HTTPS with uh, uh, all the messages signed by the uh, by the account that you create first uh, in uh, via the sim via sim similar uh, uh, REST API. So it does not go without problems, of course. Uh, things to note: uh, Let's Encrypt prefers uh, IPv6, so this is really common problem people are facing. Uh, uh, when your like a uh, developer's computer does not speak IPv6, uh, they don't like uh, recognize that uh, it has a broken AAA record uh, in the zone because they never like uh, try to use the IPv6 uh, themselves, and uh, this has caused like a lot of uh, confusion uh, because people are just not getting why the uh, validation fails every time. Even though they have the actual uh, actual validation file in the right place and uh, accessible from uh, public internet, so uh, that's a really common pro problem. Uh, let's encrypt switch to preferring IPv6. I think um, maybe half a year ago. No, not that much. Three months maybe. 
but uh, so it has like uh, resulted in in people like uh, having re uh, renewal uh, like a uh, configurations uh, that they had like working certificates uh, and a working uh, validation process uh, uh, prior to the change, and when the Let's Encrypt started to prepare uh, IPv6 addresses, uh, IPv uh, yeah. Uh, they just found themselves with a broken uh, renewal and didn't know why. Uh, yeah, no, other one, uh, next one is uh, pretty like a uh, uh, no-brainer as well. You need to have the right access uh, in your box to the actual like uh, file system uh, directory to create the TXT file. And uh, but this is uh, because this is usually done by the clients. Uh, some error out in a, like a sane way, telling there's no permissions, and some like a fail less gracefully, let's say. <clears throat> and uh, the last one is HTTPD configuration weirdnesses. Uh, there's a lot, uh, many HTTPD configurations are like a pretty complex and can or can get pretty complex over the years in a way. Uh, so uh, there's a common problem like. Uh, uh, server having uh, like a um, virtual host block, for example, for for the uh, domain you are actually serving, but at the same time uh, it actually uses the default vhost, in, uh, and uh, you well, of course, you add the uh, required stuff to the uh, to the uh, virtual host. Uh, virtual host file for the domain you are trying to uh, acquire the certificate for, but the server just serves the default uh, vhost anyway. So TLS SNI, uh, the next validation method, uh, it requires a web server on port uh, 443 and uh, it needs to be accessible, right? Uh, <coughs> You will have to, or the client uh, will have to create uh, uh, your uh, private key and certificate and uh, uh, get the, create the self-signed certificate with the validation token. That um, uh, web server, after uh, it, it, of course, needs to restart your web server in most cases to to the new configuration, uh, the validation configuration to get active, and. Um, the it's 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 invalid like a vhost that the ca will connect to uh, uh or uh invalid vhost that the uh, ca will use as a host header when requesting uh your um uh, or uh, sni header to request your uh validation uh self signed cert certificate so um yeah and uh, it's somewhat complicated uh, for like a manual operation or uh, or, uh, or like a simple uh, simple automation. Uh, so it's 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 a really good method uh, actually for the uh, validation because if it errors out, you most likely have some uh, you have identified some kind of other problem. For example. Firewall blocking the board, port 443, which would like a result in a uh, broken configuration later on. Anyway, so uh, you pretty much, when you use it, you will like a, uh, you will be sure that uh, the uh, HTTPS will be working for your uh, uh, B host. Common problems. Uh, same thing, uh, broken AAA record still uh, applies to this one because the method is, uh, uh, for the connection, the method is uh, the same as HTTP. Uh, firewall configuration, it's pretty like a often the case as well. People have like been running HTTP only site for uh, years and have blocked pretty much everything else. And uh, when they figure out they want to start serving HTTPS, they just forget about uh, forget to open the port, so it causes some uh, some confusion as well. Then there's the DNS uh, validation. Uh, so um, it's a TXT record in your magic subdomain uh, that's uh, shown here. 
And uh, this is really versatile because you don't have to have like uh, ports uh, open to your clients uh, or your ser server where you are uh, requesting the certificate for. So uh, it's, it pretty much requires uh, <coughs> uh, it requires uh, some kind of uh, DNS server with an API that you can use for automation. Uh, it's it's good for uh, complex environments because yeah because of the uh, removing of the uh, like a uh, requirements of having the ports open and uh, for example load balancers that are like uh, there are a lot a lot of uh, machines behind the load balancer and uh, uh, HTTP or TLS SNI uh, challenges would be like a thrown to uh, random uh, box beh uh, box behind the uh, load balancer so the validation will fail like. Uh, most of the time that way. And it's also going to be the requirement for the wildcard certificates that uh, Let's Encrypt is starting to ship in uh, January uh, next year, in a half year. So the problems are, yeah, no API, so you can't automate it, made it pretty much. Uh, but the second one is the more, more like a serious one because uh, you to actually like a, uh, handle handle the automation in the same way. You will have to store the API credentials on your box, and uh, that res usually results to uh, uh, your like a DNS uh, your D DNS uh, credentials to be all around like uh, your infrastructure. And uh, compromising one box would result uh, in a complete loss of your uh, whole zone, which is pretty bad because. Uh, the malicious uh, user could like, uh, or would most likely, uh, change the MX records and get all your mail as well, for example. Uh, there's a, I'll go, yeah, I'll go through the solutions later, but yeah. Uh, there are some pretty good integrations. Uh, Caddy, the most notable one, uh, it's HTTPS per default, has Super simple uh, configuration, so uh, no, not much technical knowledge needed in a way. Mm. Then there's uh, this upcoming project called Apache Mod MD uh, that will automate it uh, in a sense as well. You will have to add uh, like a, a configuration parameter to your vhost configuration for it to work and uh, and so on, but. Uh, it will handle the like a renewal and everything like that uh, automatically, be, uh, like a behind the scenes. Uh, so uh, it's going to be good. It's still not production ready, note, uh, but it's like a, it's progressing quite fast. So it will be eventually, and that's the actual like a that's the that's the actual direction we want to head to. Uh, we want to have the because the HTTPD, uh, in case of web ser uh, serving web, uh, the HTTPD has all the keys for the actual like uh, uh, domain validation using ACME methods. So uh, there's no reason to for the HTTPDs to not to do it. Uh, it's like a yeah, but we're still in transition phase in a way, and we need like. A, a, other clients to to do the uh, uh, certificate uh, like a uh, acquire acquirance uh, still, but that's the way we want to head head to. Uh, there are some kind of problems with uh, with uh, uh, HTTPD inter uh, uh, integrations, of course, because uh, many like uh, for example Apache uh, and uh, Nginx they are working on. A, per event basis in a way. So when a request comes in, the server notices that a certificate has expired. So uh, I should uh, renew it now. Uh, it's The client is still waiting. And uh, if the renewal fails, I don't know what, but uh, that's the problem. It's not like a proactively uh, looking into the, uh, they are not proactively looking into certificates and uh, seeing if they can do like uh, this in advance in a way. So there's a lot of uh, Let's Encrypt clients all around, uh, a listed few. Uh, Acme SH uh, is a client that's written in uh, Bash, has really low uh, dependencies, so uh, it's 
pretty convenient to use uh, in in uh, deployments. Uh, Certbot, uh, that's a project I'm contributing to myself. Uh, it's a Let's Encrypt client by uh, EFF. Um, and uh, in addition to actually getting the certificate, it's, it, if you want, it will configure your uh, HTTPD currently, uh, mail servers in the future for you. Um, the point here is uh, that it tries to remove the uh, like a requirement of uh, strong knowledge of TLS for uh, for anyone anyone just like a jumping in. The problem with uh, like a manual configuration for users that uh, are not familiar with uh, all the options and all the pitfalls. It's like, uh, you know, searching for uh, HTTP, the configuration for uh, TLS and uh, ending up to a, a Stack Overflow page from uh, 2011 and getting a configuration in that's uh, vulnerable to a poodle attack or whatever. So a broken cipher configurations, whatever. So uh, in that, uh, like a sense, the automatic configuration is good if you are if you don't you do not know what to do pretty much there's acme sharp i include it because it's uh one of the mo more popular uh windows clients uh the the others i think Le lego oh sorry i skipped lego uh it's a really nice client written in go uh it has like a pre-built binaries for uh um like uh, many platforms, uh, it supports Windows as well, I think. And then there's uh, yeah, Acme Sharp, which is one of the more popular Windows clients. <coughs> and uh, there's a list of uh, of the like uh, the rest uh, of the clients. There's a lot. There's a lot of uh, in integrations. There's a lot of libraries written in uh, the Lego, for example. It's 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 not only a client, it's also a library that will handle the, you, you can use in your uh, uh, whatever implementations to actually automate the uh, certificate stuff or TLS stuff. Uh, there's uh, great pages by uh, Mozilla about the configuration and uh, <clears throat> the first one is focused more on the, like a, the actual configuration the second one is uh, focused on the like a uh, decent uh, cipher uh, suit configurations and so on. So check those out. And something some things not to forget. <clears throat> uh, of course, the certificate renewal that's uh, no brainer. Uh, you can't just like uh, well some of the clients. Uh, do install like uh, cron jobs or uh, systemd timers and such, uh, especially when fetched from uh, your uh, operating system package rep repository. And uh, some, but some some don't. Uh, there's also some kind of if you if you're doing the renewal configuration manually, uh, many of the clients uh, require some kind of uh, or. Um, make use of some kind of uh, environment variables and something we have uh, had some problems we have had with certbot like uh, previously where uh, uh, users uh, making their own like a cron tab jobs and uh, missing the fact that the cron jobs don't have the environment variables avail available per uh, in an interactive session in a way so HSTS, this is uh, actually this is pretty important, and this is one of the reasons why uh, actual like uh, um, automatic configuration uh, is pretty good as well. Yeah, it's short for uh, HTTP strict uh, transport uh, transport security. It's pretty much just an HTTP header that you add, which tells the user agent, usually a browser in uh, HTTPS, <laughs> uh, it tells the uh, user agent that you are not allowed to uh, communicate with me, the server, uh, in um, any other way than HTTPS. So it will like force the client to, to actually like uh, make HTTPS requests per default in the future. And it has like a configurable um, 
uh, cache time that uh, uh, that the order is in, in effect in a way. So this well, when people are migrating to to HTTPS from HTTP, this can actually uh, be a big cause for uh, site breakage because, of course, uh, mixed content uh, requests that are in 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 the page uh, can cause some like a are that are hard coded in page and for some reason or another uh, unaccessible. Uh, other ways uh, it will create some problems and uh, it's pretty effective. I don't know. Yeah, I wonder if you see it, but it's pretty effective. But uh, if it goes wrong, it can be like a it can go horrib horribly wrong, which means that you just bricked your site for whatever uh, amounts of time that you you actually set the cache like a max age uh, value to. Or it has the it has the uh, option, oh, it's really small. Can you see it? Yeah. Uh, if you can, uh, I'm not sure if I can make it bigger, but uh, the, uh, the, all, all the slides are available in the URL in the bottom. So, uh, so yeah, uh, the include subdomains uh, like a directive there. Uh, it does what it says. It includes subdomains, and uh, if you just like like blindly, you get get uh, for example certificate and uh, make the uh, HTTP, HTTPS configuration for your main domain, and you include like because you are uh, like a. Uh, you want to do it right, you include a HSTS header that says include subdomains, and you forgot that your like a few other projects are like a subdomains to to this do actual domain, and uh, and are running on for a reason or not or another running like a plain HTTP, uh, and uh, the end user first visits your main domain, and after that tries to use your whatever other service that. Was supposed to talk HTTP. Actually, uh, it will break. It will, yeah. No, it's one o. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> one o dot fi. Yeah. Sorry. Oh. That's a good question. I, I don't know the answer to it, but okay. Yeah, cool. There's there's also there's also uh, uh, yeah okay yeah uh, sorry um, there's also HSTS preload lists which yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Uh, that's something that you can pretty much tell the uh, browser vendors to to include. Uh, the, they include your uh, domain to a preloaded list that doesn't actually need the header anymore. Uh, well, it does, but uh, it's not like a trust on first first sight in a way. So uh, lack of HSTS means that you're vulnerable to to a downgrade attacks. So pretty important. So uh, that's about it. Uh, now the rest of the time, uh, let's talk about uh, like uh, what kind of problems are you having in deployment and uh, try to solve them together. That's the actual like uh, uh, content of this workshop. So the slides uh, available at one o dot fi slash tls dash ws. Uh, the slides co uh, contain all the uh, hyperlinks, uh, so you're able to like uh, follow whatever uh, way is uh, needed for your infrastructure. And uh, I'm here to help, and uh, I think the others are here to here to help each other as well. So let's have a like uh, yeah discussion about the problems that uh, the deployments are facing, if any. Hopefully not. Not any, but uh, yeah. Sorry. Okay.
let's let's take the mic so uh, we can get you know. Hey, uh, just a quick question, because all I have is a couple of static websites on my server. Do I still need to have HTTPS, or it doesn't matter? Well, uh, I think, well, you most likely are, are linking outside uh, from your pages, in a way. Mm -hmm, yeah. So uh, think about the scen scenario, you are like, uh, you are a subject of a man-in-the-middle attack. And, to, uh, and the attacker modifies your uh, URLs from the page to point to uh, malicious sites, in a way, that maybe actually also look like the actual sites you your links are point, pointed to, uh, could lead to uh, like uh, bad things. Okay, so I should encrypt, right? <laughs> yes, everything. <laughs> I will do that. Thanks. Yeah. So, uh, any other problems? Yeah. Oh. Uh, hi, thanks for your talk. Um, I'm just wondering about uh, sites projects internally uh, on a company or uh, your site projects or stuff like that that are not exposed to the internet. And uh, we do uh, renewals and certificates through uh, reverse proxy and stuff like that. But is there another way to uh, somehow uh, get new certificates without the primary domain be exposed to the internet? Okay, so uh, you have a few options. Uh, first, uh, like it's, uh, I think the simplest one but also kind of bad is uh, to terminate the TLS on the, like uh, the, well, not var Varnish can't do it, but uh, you know, like uh, put Nginx or uh, HA proxy uh, uh, in front of the Varnish. Terminate TLS and talk plain text in your internal net network, but that's kind of bad. You can like, uh, you can make it better by creating like, like uh, using your self-signed certificates with uh, your own root CA in the boxes. So it, you can like uh, use the HTTPS in internal communication as well. Uh, but uh, the one uh, actual um, validation method that would work, work in that scenario is the DNS because it doesn't require the actual like uh, access there are some kind of hacks of course uh you can like uh you can point uh the cha you can use http challenge and uh point the like uh, all requests coming to dot uh well uh, dash known slash acme slash uh, dash challenge uh uri you, you can all redirect them to uh, one box and uh, like a uh, uh, copy over the certificate and private key to the, to the other ones, but uh, that's suboptimal, of course. Um, that's one way, uh, but uh, yeah. Then again, you won't won't be able to use the war varnish in the in the front in that case, so because it can't like uh, uh, like um, act on the actual like uh, traffic, what it does. Uh, sorry, uh, I'll get you the mic, so. I guess kind of helps if you're using like uh, SNI proxy or something. And now there is this uh, IPv6 preference, so which wasn't there like three months ago when I tried it. <laughs> so uh, like if you have uh, hosts uh, that you can connect with IPv6 and maybe do some access listing to allow only Let's Encrypt or whatever, and then you can bypass the actual uh, SNI multiplexer uh, with the on, on the IPv6 side and mm. use use the SNI multiplexer for only IPv4 or something yeah. or whatever yeah. is the scenario. But. Yeah. <coughs> Let's do this in like a discussion fashion uh, in a discussion fashion. So, uh, anyone with uh, comments? Uh, about the TLS. 
So I'd like to um, sort of um, know what your recommendations would be for a local certificate authority. If you have, for instance, a company which has lots of internal applications and you would like to encrypt them and you would have to set up a certificate authority and uh, the actual machine that you uh, used for all your to, um, to generate certificates should be uh, completely isolated and secure from uh, and um, should never ever get owned or, or yeah, that would be horrible. So what, what would your recommendation be on that? Because it's a lot of work and uh, almost no company allows you, uh, uh, would, gives their, their, their uh, uh, IT department, which is usually just uh, one person or at least they're, they're uh, on the staff. Um, they they won't allow allow you the time to to do to do all all the securing and um, uh, to do it do it properly. So, what are your recommendations there? Okay, so um, well, it's a complicated uh, matter anyway. So uh, you need some expertise to actually execute it. Like a, well, I'm not an expert in, in like a in uh, this uh, trade. So, uh, but anyway, uh, my recommendations would be if you have like a, if you want really a robust system. Use uh, Boulder. That's what. That's the Let's Encrypt like a CA uh, project, and it's all open source, so free and uh, uh, it's somewhat complicated. So, so uh, there's uh, there's an if you if you are doing this in in a really small scale, uh, there's a much easier and quicker to get running uh, CA software. That's in the Let's Encrypt repo as well. Uh, I can't remember the name, but it's it. You can find it from uh, GitHub.com/slash/Let's uh, Encrypt. It's a uh, repo under under that account. There's uh, yeah, there's the simpler one. Uh, there's these old like behemoths. I can't remember the names, but there's this one uh, that's pretty much used uh, in many large uh, companies. That's written in Java and uh, yeah. But there are options, but uh, I would use the uh, uh, maybe the Boulder, which is the yeah, let's encrypt CA uh, uh, server server code. Well, uh, that's awesome. Yeah, sure. The, the less we have questions, that means uh, more complete like uh, and working uh, uh, TLS configurations you guys have. So, so for I, for example, when we have a project with, uh, where we have a form which sends a lot of privacy data by POST method, does HTTPS give us 100% confidence that nobody can sit in the middle between connection server and client and listen in or uh, hear our data which is connect which which is um, moving between i mean does it give us 100% confidence that we are secure and nobody can use our data uh yes if you if you check uh well uh yes and no uh of course with the defa default configurations when you don't like a check for example, uh, uh, the like a, the uh, you, you don't pin the certificates in a way or, or a private keys. So in that case, it could be any uh, certificate that's uh, like a, that has been acquired for that uh, mm -hmm. domain you are accessing. So in that uh, like a, in that way, no, you can't. No. But uh, you're able to do the checks uh, checks in the software that you're using. So. That would. Uh, so you think that Wireshark is not a problem in this case when we are using, for example, when you have a simple website hmm. with post form and it's sent by JavaScript, for example, Wireshark is not a problem here, you think? <laughs> uh, no. All right. Thank you. That's the main reason we actually need the HTTPS for. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
there are some uh, like uh, really cool stuff coming uh, like a, as a requirements for uh, by uh, uh, CAA slash browser forum as well. Uh, for example, CAA uh, protocol, which is pretty much its uh, DNS record uh, that you can set to your domain that limits the CAs that are authorized to uh, like um, to to sign a certificate for your domain. You can limit them, them for example. If you don't trust uh, uh, some CA or uh, you trust just one, you can you can like uh, add it as a, as a CA header. And all the uh, certificate authorities uh, are required to to respect the CAA header starting seventh uh, of September this year, I think. So. Is the CAA header somehow like signed or something, or can they enforce that, uh, like that there has been that CAA header at some point? Can you kind of prove it retroactively? No, I don't no, think probably so. not. Anyway, yeah, yeah. okay, but yeah, DNSSEC and stuff like that. So yeah, but of course you could backdate stuff <laughs> yeah. in that one. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> you would need some notary. But yeah, thanks. So cool. I think that's that concludes the workshop. If we don't have any prop, oh, we have. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, it's on. Oh, it's on. Um, just one uh, easy question. When I have um, um, a an, an certificate, normally I have it uh, self-assigned. So, uh, what is the the best and the cheapest way to get it, uh, let's say, signed by some authority outside of my organization? Your actual, you have this one, uh, you have this one uh, private key that you want to create a certificate that's signed by a third party, or uh, any you, you can just create a new one. And I, I have a pair of public and private uh, that you key. want to use. It's my one for the server. Yeah? Yes. And uh, normally, it, I, I do self-assign it. And yeah. uh, of course, uh, it's not the, the best way when someone else wants to access my server. Of course. He, yeah. he will pop up a, a screen when they he say, OK, it's not uh, secure. Um, yeah. So, so what is the best way not hmm. to uh, to pay too much for VeriSign or whatever yep. these let, companies? Let, let's encrypt. You can use uh, your own like a self-created keys by many clients. Uh, mm -hmm. At least uh, CertBot, I know for sure. <laughs> but okay. uh, you're able to use like uh, your self-created keys. And what? How, how does CertBot uh, bot works? Do they need hmm. an authentication from my side? Or have yes, I, they do. Uh, how? <laughs> uh, well, we had these uh, different kinds of uh, validation methods. <clears throat> These are the uh, ones that uh, you have to pick one of. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. uh, well, the more, uh, simplest one is, of course, the uh, uh, HTTP validation, which is pretty much just placing a one file in your like uh, uh, file system in the in the web root directory. So uh, the most of the clients do the, uh, st stuff like this; they automate it. For example, uh, certbot, which uh, yeah, so you can define certbot that put this one, uh, the, the, use this web root directory for validation, and uh, the the one one of the things you want to do this uh, for are uh, because let's encrypt certificates are valid for ninety days, so it needs an uh, needs needs automation, so it well, for the renewal mm -hmm. uh, cycle. But the renewal configuration it rem remembers your preference to use your uh, like a own key. Normally, cert what Certbot does it it creates a new new key pair uh, for uh, like a, every renewal actually. So okay. you you get like a fresh key every time it gets renewed, which is basically after sixty days. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yep, thanks. Ah, one ah, sorry. Makes sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah.
Uh, I thought it was like a lo-fi yeah. kind of music. Yeah, 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 yeah I'm sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> I, <laughs> I also had a problem with another, like a short domain I own. Uh, it's a 0p.fi. You can we, give it to me. No, uh, the problem is that uh, there's this large bank slash uh, insurance company in Finland called, called op.fi. And uh, I got some really obscure emails <laughs> to my domain. I uh, had to remove the MX records, but because I don't want to have people like, people's like personal stuff. <laughs> so did you bought the domain early or no? no. How, did you, how did you find it? Uh, the finished like a re registry. It's just like a. For the short, dom uh, I just acquired few short domains because they're short. <laughs> but the op slash zero p is like a, it's. I can see why why it's hard for people because the o and zero are right next to each other, other and look a bit alike. Uh, sorry. I contacted their security team about that, yeah. So I really hope they they don't, but uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't... Okay, thank you. If you have some questions like a pop-up later on, uh, you, you find my contact, contact details in uh, 10.fi, the root sites. Uh, there are my contact details. Uh, or uh, just like uh, ask if we pass by in Sha or anywhere else in the future. So thank you.